morning. Good morning. How's it going? Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? It's pretty sunny here today. Hasn't been sunny really very much this month in the morning, so it's pretty, pretty rare. Uh, just popping by. Well, hello, welcome, welcome to pop by. Hello, nineties mom. I like that you're nineties mom with Rugrats because that's very poignant. Rugrats in the nineties. Oh no, last one of this one. Just kidding. I've got more in the cupboard because we don't run out of coffee in this household. That is not a thing that I am willing to do. Although I did find out something very. <laughs> So y'all know how next week, uh, oh my God, we should be Amanda. Next week I'm going to spend uh, four days down at my sister's house because she and my brother-in-law are going out of town for a work thing and um, secret husband and I are going to be watching my niece and nephew, which is wonderful. We're very happy about that, no problem. All good things there. But I found out this morning that they only have a French press. Now listen, I know how to use a French press and I love a French press, but previously my sister had an espresso, like an old one that she was given by her mother-in-law. And I'm like, well, what happened to your Nespresso? Because I was like, like, I love a French press, but who has time to French press their coffee when they have two kids? My sister doesn't really drink coffee anymore, I guess, which is crazy town to me. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do because I have time to make coffee in the morning, you know, like this, we make it all slow and peaceful or whatever. There are no children in this house. With a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, you want me to do a French press? I was like, girl. Girl. I looked at my sister, I was like, are we living in the Stone Age? She had an espresso machine. Someone gifted it to her. Where is it? I'm not saying she has to buy one. Someone gifted it to her. Where did it go? Where did it go? I'll buy my own pods. I have no problem supplying my own pods. No problem. I mean, crazy, Amanda. That's so expensive. How could I afford to do that? I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, it's morning here. I live in California. If she was gifted one, she must use it. Um, we were talking about how my sister only has a French press at her house, but I'm babysitting her two kids for four days. She was supposed to make coffee in a French press with two under five children clawing at me. Listen, I love those children, but I need my coffee in the morning. I am doing them a big favor. I am for free watching two children for four days. I deserve coffee. Nobody gets this kind of gift. Four days. <laughs> well, Secret Husband will be there for half the time when he gets off work, but still. Four days? Yeah. What happened four days? I was talking about how we're going to go watch the kids, but I found out this morning that Catherine doesn't have the Nespresso anymore. <laughs> how am I going to survive? Just take our machine? No. Why? I mean, mom has one down there. We could just go over there. You're gonna go all over your mom's house for coffee? Or well, anything? I could steal her machine. Better than lugging one from all the way from here. I don't know. I'll talk to my mom. Catherine, coffee. Catherine? apparently she gave it up. <laughs> you laugh, but wait until it's Friday morning and a one-year-old wakes us up and you want coffee. <laughs> I'm not I'm not the one who created this situation. No, I created this situation. <laughs> but I created it under the auspice that I was going to have coffee. I would never create a situation. No, he's a tea drinker. What? Yeah. What? I know. Wild, right? Insane. It's crazy. Does Ethan sleep pretty good? Yes, he does sleep well now. What is um, the point of tea? He like wakes up in the morning and has tea? 
No, he just is an iced tea drinker throughout the day the way that like we drink coffee. Um, Ethan does sleep pretty well, but also you have to remember both of his parents are gonna be gone, so I'm expecting a little bit of an adjustment period. You know, I'm not, I don't expect this one-year-old to be perfect right off the bat. I'm not unrealistic like that. He's a baby still, you know. I know that he's gonna, he's gonna cry at me even though he loves me now. He'll be happier when you arrive, that's for sure. What? Ethan. Always gonna be happy with you, buddy. Um, yeah, no, I think we'll have a great time, but I'm gonna need coffee, so. He's good whenever I'm the one that's outside. Mm -hmm. I love that you just spelled it as if he could hear you. Yeah. <laughs> that was really funny. That was very good. Did you guys hear that? He goes, Ethan's okay anytime M-O-M is out of sight as if Ethan could hear him say the word mom and would start crying. That's <laughs> it's practice. A habit. It's a great habit. That's a very practiced uncle right there. That is very good work. That's a green flag. <laughs> that was good. Anytime M-O-M is out of sight. Yes, and it will just be me the first night, Amanda, um, because Secret Husband has to work, so he's coming down Thursday night um after work which is fine he's he's doing me a solid by coming on friday um but it is pretty funny anyway i will i will discuss the coffee situation with my sister um maybe maybe I will, it will be a, maybe i'll take a starbucks run every morning and it'll just be a little splurge that i do um she did leave me funds to buy things for the kids and i might be like guess what's coming out of the kid fund my coffee in the morning um why don't you just take our espresso machine no, because that feels like an amount of effort that I'm not prepared for. No, Liz, absolutely not. Absolutely not. What do you mean effort? It's two pieces. Well, why wouldn't I get the one that's already down there two minutes away from their house rather than lugging one from here? Is your mom going to be home? Only part of the time. And she can come over and have coffee with us. She should spend time with her grandchildren. Those are her grandchildren. But it's still hers, then. I bought the coffee machine for her. The least she could do is let me use it. I bought this machine. I am the supplier of coffee to this family. She should spend time with her grandchildren. All right, have a good time. Enjoy the gym. You have a good time too. You have the cards there in your phone. Did you get the text I sent you with the code? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It's just one. Yes, exactly, Amanda. Exactly. Uh, I'll be back soon. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. I love you. You really are the supplier of coffee to your family. I am. I'm the supplier of coffee to the whole family. When when I lived next to my sister, she used to come over every morning so that I would make coffee instead of her having to make coffee. Not because she didn't want to buy coffee. She still paid for some of the pods or whatever. She just likes the way I make coffee better than the way that she made coffee. So I guess with me gone, she's just given it up completely. And I'm like, Catherine, you could just learn how to make it. You don't have to give it up. No one's like... Anyway, that's my, that's my soapbox for the morning. Now listen, I do make really good coffee. When the ladies were here, only Tressa tried my coffee. I made her an iced coffee and she said it was good, but um, you know, it's true. Stuff is, can be better. I, I don't like when other people make coffee for me. I prefer to make my own coffee. That is my preference. Uh, I think I make it the best, um, <laughs> which apparently so do a lot of other people, but, um, Neither Becca nor Renee drink coffee, so they did not have coffee when they came here to visit me. Only Tressa drinks coffee, but it was hot, so she wanted iced coffee. Well, hot to her. I had a hot coffee while she had a nice coffee. Whatever, everyone's different. Um, okay, so anyway, excuse me, I have the hiccups. That's why I keep stopping like that. Why do I always have the hiccups? Yeah, I was with my sister too. I like it when she makes specific coffees. Yeah, yeah. That's how my sister feels. She 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 likes it when I when I make her coffee. Uh, what is the shirt of? I don't really know. This was Secret Husband's shirt, and he was like, "I'm gonna get rid of it, or you can make it a sleep shirt." And I was like, "Okay." And now it's like a sleep and slime shirt. Sometimes I sleep in it. Sometimes I slime in it. I'm not sure what it is or what it was. It's got some nice colors though. I don't know, I'm not sure. 
Like I could make my own, yes, but it won't taste the same. That's what Catherine says, yeah. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, we are reading Stranger Than Fan Fiction and it is by Chris Coffer. Um, hopefully our official fan club stickers will arrive soon. I got the tracking number a couple of days ago for those stickers, so hopefully they'll come soon and then people can have them, you know? Um, we are on chapter nine, chapter nine. So here we go. Chapter nine is called The World's Biggest Rubber Band Ball. In case anyone wants a spoiler, we do we have a poll of how long it will take to be a restricted life? Ooh, how long do you think it will take for us to get restricted, you guys? Anyone wanna take a vote before we start? How long do you think it's gonna take before I start reading? Make your predictions. We're, we're, we're green right now. And my devil's advocate is just like justifying shit at my pro and coffee. Yeah, you are, you are justifying it, yeah. 11.52 Eastern, okay, all right. Jen thinks it'll only take three minutes, yikesies. That's like a page and a half, if that. All right, here we go. Chapter nine, the world's biggest rubber band ball. A lot of people are saying 10, 15-ish, so like somewhere between seven and 15 minutes. All right, well, let's see. Um, it has been average, you're right. It's 8.40 right now, so we'll take stock of what happens. Topher sped down the highway, eager to leave the chaos of McCarthy's in the past. He felt terrible for not helping Cash avoid the situation, but he didn't know how he could have foreseen it. The anguished driver repeatedly apologized to the actor to squash any hard feelings that might have been forming. Once again, I am so sorry for turning you into a human photo op, Topher said. I won't let it happen again. Will you just stop apologizing? Cash said. How are you supposed to know that they would come at me like piranhas? I've gotten stuck for longer in worse places. This one time I was at the checkout in an Ikea for eight hours. You were taking pictures for eight hours? Mo asked. No, I was just buying a lamp. What up? Cash laughed wildly at his own joke and Topher was relieved to see that he was in good spirits. The actor had been in a much better mood after taking the two white pills from his backpack. Oh, there it goes. Now I'm probably gonna get restricted. You spoke too soon, Anya. Whether they were for pain or anxiety, nobody asked, but what they figured, but they figured that it was warranted after the ordeal in the diner. At roughly a quarter to four o'clock and 220 miles into the trip, there car passed exit 178B and Topher knew that they were getting close to their first roadside attraction. It hasn't happened yet. Still hasn't happened. We are almost at the world's biggest rubber band ball, he announced. Cash looked out the window and he, all he saw were fields and trees. How do you know that? I didn't even see a sign. I got the entire route memorized, Topher said. We just passed exit 178B and the world's biggest rubber band ball is off of exit 180A. It should be coming up in a couple more minutes. You memorized the exit numbers? Cash asked in disbelief. Topher's got one of those brains, Sam said. He took more AP classes than anyone else at school and he was the valedictorian of our class. Thank God, too, because none of us would have passed Algebra 2 if he hadn't tutored us, Mo added. Color me impressed, Cash said. Where are you planning to go to college, Toph? Are you going to be one of those Ivy League hotshots? Uh, no, not, not exactly. I'm staying in Downers Grove to get my GE, and then I'll transfer later to save money, and that way I can help my mom with my little brother. My, my brother's got cerebral palsy. Topher is the br best brother in the whole world. Joey bragged, and I would know. I have two older ones and two younger ones, and we do not treat each other with even an ounce of the compassion that Topher has for Billy. Wow, in that case, I called dibs to the film rights of your life story, Cash said. What does the future hold for the rest of you guys? College, Peace Corps, Sea Org? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to the Rhode Island School of Design, Sam said. Stanford, Mo said. Fancy. What about you, Joey? I'll be majoring in performing arts at Oklahoma Baptist University, he said. You're going to Oklahoma to study performing arts? Isn't that like going to Florida State to be a ski instructor? Well, Joey paused as he came up with the defense. I mean, it's a really great program. I won't be too far from home. And a lot of talent has come out of Oklahoma. Brad Pitt, Blake Edwards, Kristen Chenoweth, James Marsden. Actually, as an aside to you guys, 
Oklahoma State University does have a great performing arts program. So I don't know what Cash is talking about, but like their musical theater program is ace. So I don't, I don't know a lot about Oklahoma, but I know that. Just so you guys know. Huh. I suppose you're right, Cash said. Sorry, I didn't mean to like shit on your parade. You clearly know what you're doing. I imagine it'll be hard meeting other gay people at a Baptist school though. Joey suddenly sat up straight in his seat like he had been electrocuted. I feel like I just got electrocuted. Um, I'm not gay, he said. Cash was stunned as if Joey had just denied being African-American. He looked at Joey's friends, but they didn't second guess the objection. Oh, uh, my bad, Cash said. I meant it as a compliment. You look like you take care of yourself and you seem really well put together like most gay people I know. I probably misread the whole performing arts thing or something. Oh, uh, compliment accepted, Joey said with a nervous laugh. By the way, speaking of school, that reminds me, I have to attend the stupid registration meeting tomorrow night in Oklahoma City. A meeting this early before the semester? Topher questioned. Ridiculous, right? Joey huffed. It's something all the students from out of state need to do before the school year starts, so I figured I would just get it out of the way before we're going to be there. It'll save me another trip. His friends were bummed that they'd miss a night with him, but they understood the convenience and didn't fault him for it. A meeting at school? Really, Joey? That's your excuse? Okay. Everyone believes that at the beginning of summer, you're having a school trip or a whatever. Anyway, a little sus, Joey. <sighs> uh, bah, 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 bah. Cash, on the other hand, thought it was a little too convenient. Something else was definitely going on and Joey was terrible at hiding it. Cash knew a bad performance when he saw one. I see exit 80, 188, Topher declared. First stop, here we come. The station wagon took the exit and pulled off the highway. They traveled a couple of miles away from the interstate and then they turned onto a dirt, lined ro dirt road lined with a metal fence. The world's biggest rubber band ball was at the very end of the road perched on top of a grassy hill. It was the size of a house and a wooden observation deck was wrapped around it. Topher parked at the base of the hill, but there weren't any other visitors. He and his friends got out of the car and let Cash out of the back and stared up at the attraction for a couple of moments before approaching it. What a dump, Mo said. Their first roadside attraction was a complete letdown. It was a severely sun damaged and all its colorful bands had turned gray over time. Several pieces of wood were missing from the deck and termites had feasted on what remained of them. Even I couldn't fix up this pile of garbage. Sam said, maybe, maybe it'll look better close up, Topher suggested, once again blaming himself for their disappointment. They climbed the hill to get a better look, but it was even more decrepit up close. The whole deck had been tagged with graffiti and several bird's nests had been built within the looser bands. The pictures online looked way better, Sam said. Granted, they were taken in the 40s. Of which century, Mo quipped. It's still a landmark, Topher said. We'll still get to tell our grandchildren that we saw the world's biggest rubber band ball. That's pretty cool, right? Cash was the only one brave enough to climb up the steps and walk around the observation deck. He seemed to see a much different attraction than the others did. Yeah, just for this one, we're using the Kindle because that's the way that I was able to get it the fastest. I sympathize with it, he said. This thing has spent its whole life on display, amusing and delighting families decade after decade, only to spend its final days covered in bird shit with the stench of roadkill. It reminds me of an old actress I know, Cash said. Do you think it bounces? Joey asked. Cash shrugged. I don't know. Let's find out. He leaned back on the railing and kicked the giant ball with both feet as hard as he could, trying to set it free. The whole deck shit and shook, and the pieces of wood started to break off. Um, hi, can we not damage public property? Sam asked. Some of us have applied for scholarships and will be denied if we get arrested. Stuck anyway, Cash said and ended his assault on the landmark. This place is a dud. Let's get out of here. If we leave now, maybe we can make up for lost time and also the time that we lost at the diner. The travelers headed down the hill to the station wagon, but stopped when they heard a series of loud snaps and crunches behind them. They turned back to the attraction at the top of the hill and saw the observation deck starting to crumble and collapse beneath it. That cannot be good, Mo said. 
The world's biggest rubber band ball began to wobble and break free from the barriers containing it. The giant ball slowly rolled out from the deck's debris and descended down the hill, heading straight toward its visitors. Run! Topher yelled. They bolted for the station wagon and threw themselves into the car. Topher cranked the ignition, but the engine didn't start. Why isn't it starting? Sam shouted. Because it never starts on the first try, Topher reminded her and tried again. At the first enormous ball of rubber bands, wait, at first, the enormous ball of rubber bands moved at a leisurely pace, but it gained speed and momentum the further it traveled. Soon, it was racing down the hill like a rubber avalanche. Can you please hurry? It's getting closer. I just need a second, Joey uh, Topher said. We don't have a second, Joey screamed. And finally, the station wagon roared to life. Topher yanked the gear shift into reverse and slammed his foot on the accelerator. The car rocketed backwards right before mo the moving landmark could flatten it. The passengers cheered but their worries weren't over. Um, it is still coming toward us, Sam hollered. <laughs> this is just like Indiana Jones, Cash laughed. The giant ball ricocheted off the metal fence like a pinball and chased the station wagon down the dirt road like Godzilla. Everyone inside the car screamed, except for Cash, who sang the Indiana Jones theme song at the top of his lungs. Right when Topher worried that they were all a goner, the car reached the end of the dirt road and he swerved out of the rogue attraction's path. The world's biggest rubber band ball bounced into the horizon like a deer recently freed from captivity. Topher, Joey, Sam, and Mo sat quietly as their hearts recovered from the traumatic experience. They were out of breath, sweating profusely. Their whole lives had just flashed before their eyes. Cash erupted into a wildly inappropriate fit of hysterical laughter. What is so funny? Joey shouted, you almost got us killed. Sorry, the actor snickered, but at least I answered your question. Guys, it's 8.50. We finished a chapter and we have no restrictions yet. And we said the word P-I-L-L-S. So we're gonna read another chapter. You were very wrong, Jen. No offense, I hate to say that to you. You know I love you, but you were very wrong this time. I know, it's shocking. We're doing amazing. However, yeah, knowing the title of the next, um, I'm gonna do my best to read this chapter. Okay, this chapter is chapter 10 and it's called Rosemary's Schmushmorshan. So that's not good for us. <clears throat> Starts with an A and ends with a shun and usually someone, uh, not someone, uh, some cells don't make it out alive. Is this easy to follow if you haven't been here? Yeah, it's not too bad, but also we have the chapters um, updating on uh, a YouTube for you if you wanna catch up later and then, and then also you'll feel caught up tomorrow. So you can feel free to stay for today and watch yesterday's later. At 6.35 on Sunday, Topher, Joey, Sam, and Mo were enjoying the exhibits of the Lewis and Clark Museum in downtown St. Louis. Do they call it St. Louis there or St. Louis there? I don't actually know because there are some St. Louises or like Louisville and then there's also St. Louis because like the musical takes place there and it's called Meet Me in St. Louis, not Meet Me in St. Louis. I don't know which one they call it there. Do they use the I or do they not? Anyway, not sure. Never been with the S. Okay, great, so I did it right. Okay, great, so St. Louis. The museum, so the musical just decided we don't want this S because S's are difficult in songs, maybe. And St. Louis sounds better in a song. That's my guess. I have no other understanding of why they would do that. But seems like a pretty good guess, right? Because, okay, if you guys remind me at the end of this, I have to tell you guys a story about singing and S's and how awful people are but we'll read first. The museum was rather dull and its displays were in serious need of a renovation, but the gang wasn't complaining. After narrowly missing being killed by the world's biggest rubber band ball, they found the lackluster halls of the U.S. and Clark Museum very comforting. They had dropped Cash off at a coffee shop earlier so that he could find something fun for them to do later that night, and they feared whatever suggestion he was gonna come with their, that was going to come their way. Being with this actor was turning into more of a babysitting job than a dream come true. So they enjoyed the peaceful museum while they could. <clears throat> 
Sacagawea was a Native American woman from the, the Lemhi Shoshone tribe, Mo read from the pamphlet they received at the museum's entrance. She played an essential role in the Lewis and Clark exploration of the Louisiana Purchase, guiding the explorers from North Dakota to the Pacific Ocean, and established communication with the Native American population that they encountered. Mo and her friends observed a tacky depiction of the explorers' first interaction with their, with their celebrated guide tour guide. Lewis and Clark were handsome mannequins with blonde hair and blue eyes and chiseled torsos peeking out from their colonial garb. Sacagawea was a slightly terrifying wax figure with a wandering eye, a smashed nose, and a crooked head. She looked more like a Halloween decoration than a national treasure. Typical, Sam said. She did most of the work, and yet they named the museum after the boys. Why can't there be a Sacagawea University or a public library or high school? Because white people are too immature to handle a name like Sacagawea, Topher offered. They heard a commotion at the front of the museum and saw Cash at the entrance. He was trying to purchase admission, but the cashier recognized him, was so surprised she forgot how to work the register. Once she recovered from the shock, she sold him a ticket and he happily jogged across the museum to join his fellow roadies. Hey guys, I found the perfect thing for us to do tonight. He boasted, I got us tickets to see Rosemary's Schmushmarshman live in concert. They're in St. Louis for one night only and we're completely sold out, but luckily I found some guy on Craigslist who had some tickets for sale. Rosemary's Schmushmarshman, Mo asked. Her imagination did her no favors and filled her head with gruesome assumptions. I'm afraid to ask what that is. It's only the coolest, hippest, and trendiest punk rock band in the entire Midwest, Cash explained. Is that an oxymoron? Joey asked. They've got 10,000 likes on their Facebook page, three independently released albums on iTunes, and they were very avid Bernie Sanders supporters, Cash pitched. I've never heard of them personally, he added, but after checking every social event on the calendar on the internet, it's our best bet for fun on a Sunday night. The actor excitedly passed out tickets to Topher, Joey, Sam, and the Sacagawea statue, mistaking it for Mo. I'm over here, she said. Cash took a second look at the wax figure and he jumped a foot backwards. What the hell is that, an Ewok? That's supposed to be Sacagawea, Sam said. The name didn't ring a bell. Sacaja, huh? Cash asked. I had a Sacagawea once, but it was nothing a little penicillin couldn't clear up. hey -o! Yeah, <clears throat> told you they couldn't handle the name, Topher whispered to the others. Cash looked around the museum as if he had taken a wrong turn and wound up in the wrong place. He removed his sunglasses to get a better look at his surroundings. Why does this place look like the set of Davy Crockett? Where's all the Superman stuff? The other shared a confused glance. Clearly there had been a miscommunication. Um, this is the Lewis and Clark Museum, Topher said. You know, the, the famous explorers from history. Cash was appalled. I thought you guys said you were going to a Lois and Clark Museum. You guys came here intentionally? Good God, someone saved these kids from themselves. For the first time, the others noticed his eyes were bright red and his pupils were the size of pinholes. He was also standing a bit more hunched over than he had been before and his head wobbled back and forth like a toddler. Are you feeling okay, Cash? Joey asked. You seem a little loopy. Oh, yeah, no, it's just my allergy medication, he said and quickly changed the subject. Anyway, the doors for the concert open at seven and the band goes on at eight. We should probably get going so that we can have a drink before we get there. It's a couple miles down the road. They all looked at the tickets and spotted something crucial that Cash had overlooked. Um, hey, sorry, th this ticket says that it's 21 and over show. Topher pointed out, they're not gonna let us in. Oh, no, that won't be a problem. I almost forgot, he said and pulled out four ID cards from his pocket. I got you guys fake IDs. Cash presented the IDs like a winning poker hand, but the idea of using fake identification mortified his friends. We left you alone for barely an hour. How did you have time to get concert tickets and fake IDs? Mo asked. The prop guy from WizKids is from St. Louis and passed along a contact, Cash said and handed them out. Tonight you get to leave your square Downers Grove personas behind you. Topher will be Boris, Joey will be Hemi, Sam will be Katrina, and Mo will be Sue Young. See, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about, Sam disagreed. Cash, this is super illegal. You could have been arrested for this. And how would we have bailed you out? The actor grunted, police. If I had a nickel for every time I could have gotten arrested, the bail would pay for itself. If you're worried about getting caught, don't be. These IDs are premium stuff. They're duplicates from the St. Louis DMV. Cost me a grand each. The guy had a case with hundreds of them. I picked the ones that kind of resembled you guys the most. 
as if, Mo objected, this girl could be a sumo wrestler and Soo Young isn't even a Japanese name. Look, we appreciate you going to all this trouble, but this is just too much for us, Topher said. Besides, we had our hearts set on watching the sunset from the Gateway Arch. We don't want to miss that for a concert. Cash was thoroughly disappointed. They tried to give him the IDs back, but he wouldn't accept them. You four are the worst teenagers in the world, he said. I've got news for you. The sun and the gateway arch aren't going anywhere, but your youth is passing you by like a taxi in a bad neighborhood. Using fake IDs and sneaking into a concert is what being young is all about. Let yourselves have a little fun while you still can. Topher, Joey, Sam, and Mo collectively sighed. The potential consequences did make them nervous, but they were tempted by the idea of having a little fun. Uh, I suppose misbehaving just once wouldn't be so bad, Sam said. And we did want to make memories on this trip, Joey said. <clears throat> well, strategically speaking, I guess the odds are in our favor, Topher said. I imagine the likelihood of getting caught the first time we break the rules is like a very low percentage. Okay, I'm in, Mo decided. But if we get caught, I'm telling the police that you forced us at pew pew point. That was my attempt to not get us a restriction. Okay, whoever this person is that's a fake Shira, stop trying to join my live. You're not Shira. I can see your photo. I don't know you. Go away. Why do I feel like Cash has some sort of secret we don't know? It's true, Liz. You're right. He does have a secret we don't know. He said that in the first chapter, and he did not tell us what it was. The cast of his show and the showrunners also don't know what the secret is. We don't know. They don't know. Only Cash knows. Do you think he's dying? Like, and that's why he's just like, throw caution to the wind. I don't care. Maybe he has cancer. I'm not trying to be mean, but like, that seems like a logical answer, right? Like, he's too chill about Joey being gay for it to be that he's gay. That can't be it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he's taking the P-I-L-L-S to take away the pain, maybe. I'm just guessing. I don't have any spoilers. I don't know anything. And those of you who have read it, shut your mouths. We don't want to hear from you. Yeah. No offense, but this is the only time we don't want to hear from you. Yeah, it has to be something like that, I imagine. Uh, Cash rubbed his hands together eagerly. It's a deal, he said. Now let's get out of here. I swear that Sacagawea just winked at me. The five thrill seekers left the museum with so much anxiety that it was as if they had planned to rob a bank. They loaded into the station wagon and Cash guided Topher to the concert venue across the city. The location was much farther than he had first advertised and in a very questionable part of town. All the buildings had thick bars over the windows and murals of graffiti and shoes hung from every power line. There it is, Cash said as they drove past the venue. He pointed to a large warehouse with the banner that said, Rosemary's blah, 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 one night only in a random font style. A long line was already formed at the door and the concert goers wore leather, spiked collars and chains. They were covered in piercings and tattoos. Joey gulped. Well, um, <clears throat> this is an interesting crowd, he said. Aren't you worried that you'll get recognized in there? Sam asked Cash. Nah, he said. These don't look like people who would watch a show about a time traveling porta potty. I should be okay. Yeah, that they remind me of those aliens from that Whiz Kids episode in season seven. Mo said. Remember when the porta potty traveled to the planet of Smamanatrix? <laughs> Boy, do I, Cash recalled. That was the first episode where I had to take my shirt off. I lived on yams and sit-ups for three weeks to be able to film that. To this day, I can still smell sweet potato fries. I still can't smell sweet potato fries without it triggering an extreme phantom abdominal pain. Wait, quick, that guy's leaving. Take his parking spot. Topher parked the car a few blocks from the warehouse. The 1994 station wagon was the nicest car on the street, and the passengers were afraid to get out. Cash ate a couple of gummy bears from his backpack before leading the way, but didn't offer them to the others. Come on, he teased them. Don't chicken out now. We're almost there. They courageously left the car and joined the line outside the warehouse. They were obviously out of their element, but not as much as the old man walking past the line. He seemed very confused by the event and held a sign behind his back. Thank goodness, Topher said and pointed him out to his friends. Someone who looks more out of place than we do. Joey's face fell flat when he saw him, like he recognized someone he didn't like. No, he's not here for the concert, he said. Excuse me, sir. There aren't any actual shmushmortions going on here. It's just an ironic band name. Is this 14th Street? The man asked. No, I think it's 4th Street. Oh, thanks, he said. Enjoy the show. God bless. 
The old man turned to leave and they saw that he said, had an, that his sign read, Shmushmorshin kills, Jesus saves. How did you know that he was a protester? Cash asked. Yeah, I recognized the lost but judgmental look in his eyes, Joey said. My family used to protest outside of Planned Parenthoods every Sunday after church. There's nothing more awkward than asking for directions with a picket sign in your hand. Interesting, Cash said. My family just went to the movies. They edged closer and closer to the door, which was monitored by a bald mountain of a man. The, bouncer disgrun the bouncer's disgruntled attitude made two things very clear. He wasn't easily fooled, and he did not want to be working on a Sunday night. <laughs> IDs, he growled. The bouncer checked Cash's first without a problem, and then he paused as he inspected the others, especially Moe's. I was going through a really tough time, she said. The bouncer glared at their group suspiciously. I've got a feeling these aren't real, he said. Topher, Joey, Sam, and Mo all began to panic internally. Was he gonna call the cops? Were they gonna get arrested? Should they make a run for it? Was he as fast as he was big? Seriously, dude, Cash said. If we had fake IDs, do you think we would be using them to go to Rosemary Schmorshen in Bumble F, Missouri? There's casinos down the street. The bouncer shrugged. He had a point. All right, go ahead. The gang followed Cash through the door, shocked that they had actually pulled that off. Their anxiety was replaced with a strong burst of adrenaline. What a rush, Mo said. I can't believe people break their rules so much. I feel so naughty and alive. Easy, Lizzie Borden, Cash said. Don't get addicted to the dark side now. The warehouse was packed with more tough looking people. The Downers Grove natives stuck out like a hand of sore thumbs and they worried that at any moment, someone would ask them to leave. There were no seats, but a large standing area in front of a small stage flooded with purple lights. Cash led his group to a crowbar, at, a cr sorry, not a crowbar, a crowded bar at the side of the warehouse. I'm gonna get a drink. Do you guys want anything? We don't drink, Topher said. Like, never? I had a sip of communion wine once, Joey said. Jesus, I'm traveling with the Brady Bunch, Cash said. I'm starting to think that I was sent to you guys by higher power. You guys need someone to teach you how to have fun, how to let loose, and how to destroy a national landmark, Sam said, because you can check that one off the list. Cash smiled. Exactly, he said, and then he faced the bar. Bartender, I would like a shot of Johnny Walker Black. All we have is Jim Beam, the bartender said. So, Cash said. Oh, sure, he knows who those guys are, but not Lewis and Clark, Mo whispered, Mo whispered to the others. The actor slammed a $10 bill on the counter and he threw his head back to take the shot. I said, God damn, Cash hollered as he recovered from the burn in his throat. Are you supposed to drink on your allergy medications? Topher asked. Nope, but it does make drinking a whole lot more fun. Cash said, gosh, I'm ready to dance. Hope this band doesn't suck. A trio of tattooed 30-somethings in skinny jeans appeared on the stage with their instruments. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> the crowd cheered and gathered around the front of the stage like a school of fish. Cash and the others were crammed among them the like they were in a can of punk rock anchovies. Hello, St. Louis, the lead singer greeted the crowd, which was impressive with the number of lip piercings that he had. We are Rosemary's beep a boop boop We are pro-choice and pro-rock and roll. Now let's get this party started. One, two, three, four. The opening notes of their first song blasted through the speakers and the crowd went wild. Topher, Joey, Sam, and Mo had to cover their ears while their eardrums adjusted to the volume. They couldn't make out a single lyric since the singer mostly yelled the song and the fast-paced beat was totally hypnotic. Everyone throughout the warehouse bobbed up and down excitedly to the beat of the song, but no one was more energetic than Cash. The others figured that his whiskey was kicking in because the actors shimmied and shook like jello on an earthquake. The crowd worried that he was having a seizure and gave him space, but Cash just boogied his little heart out even harder. I want whatever that dude's on, a spectator said. Cash's erratic dance moves started gaining an audience of their own, and his friends worried that they were about to have another McCarthy's incident on their hands. What do we do? Topher asked his friends. He might get recognized if he causes a scene. If people start asking for pictures, we're going to be here until next week. I have an idea, Sam said. We'll take the attention away from him. How? Like this. Sam jumped next to Cash and began dancing even crazier than he was. He moved like a go-go dancer undergoing electric shock therapy. His plan was effective because all eyes quickly moved from the actor to the psycho dancing beside him. It's working, Joey said. I'm gonna help too. 
Joey threw himself into the mix, impressing the onlookers with the zaniest moves that he had learned from his hip hop dance team. Sam cheered him on and tried mimicking his moves. Mo ma Mo's mouth dropped open at the sight and she turned to Topher in shock. Oh my God, those are our friends, she laughed. I'm, I'm gonna dance too, when in Rome, right? Mo sashayed toward her friends and bounced her backside like she was trying to shake off a spider. Sam and Joey laughed hysterically at her and tried to copy it. As the song played on, it was less and less about creating a distraction from cash and more like a full-blown competition of who could look like the biggest buffoon. Their eccentric, their eccentric, Their eccentricity was contagious and all the people surrounding them began showcasing their own quirky moves too. Like an airborne epidemic, the ridiculousness spread through the crowd until the entire warehouse was dancing wildly and cash was patient zero. Come on, Topher, Sam said as he danced toward him. Let your freak flag fly. No, I, I'm good, he said. I'm not much of a mover or a shaker, so I'm just gonna hang out over here by the bar until there's a slower song. Topher, Sam said and forcefully pulled himself closer. Just shut up and dance with me. All it took was a tug in his arm and a twinkle in Sam's eye and Topher lost all sense of himself. He moved his body like an orangutan on speed, like an intoxicated father of the bride, like an inflatable at a car sale. He made Sam laugh so hard that tears filled his eyes. Sam was so beside himself that he had to stop and catch his breath. Topher had never seen him so happy before. He would have danced all night if it meant more time with Sam's smile and laugh. That's when it dawned on him. Oh no, Topher thought, unable to deny it anymore. I have a crush on Samantha Gibson. Sam caught his breath and continued dancing, twirling in a circle around Topher like an orbiting planet. Sam was so free, so loose, so carefree that he was practically another person altogether, certainly not the girl that Topher had grown up with. Ah, pff, Topher thought, this is more than a crush. I might be in love with Samantha Gibson. Mo and Joey popped up on either side of them and started freak dancing like a small dog marking its territory. Apparently, Sam wasn't the only one in rare form. It was almost impossible not to let go. There were no parents holding them back, no younger siblings needing to be cared for, and no one telling them that they were going to burn in hell. Also, no one telling them they had an illness. There were no limits, no responsibilities, no, re no religion, and no misunderstandings. In that moment, there was just music vibrating through their bodies. The worst part was knowing that the music and the movement would eventually end. After four or five songs worth of intense dancing, Cash began to slow down. He looked at the dancing fools around him with pride, but then froze like he was about to be sick. Are you okay, bud? Topher asked, do you need some water? As if it were happening in slow motion, Topher watched the light fade from his eyes and the smile fade from his lips. The color drained from his face. The actor fell backwards and collapsed on the floor. Cash, Topher screamed. That's not good. That's not good. This is why you don't mix things, you guys. Don't take anything, actually. I don't do any of the above, but don't, 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 don't mix things. This is very sad. Very sad. I know. I know, you guys, but we did two chapters. <clears throat> Wild. Um, okay, so just as a heads up, I think we are postponing tonight's roll for slime after dark because we did not have signups. I put up another thing seeing if anyone wanted to do it tomorrow and um, I will use tonight's time to do the videos for people who needed videos. It sucks, but roll for slime is the only kind of live I literally cannot do without signups because I can't just make slime for nobody. Um, yeah, I know, Topher plus Sam, maybe, yeah. Um, so we will not have, I know it sucks sloth, but I can't force people to sign up. You know what I mean? There are still 10 people who are owed July, either roll for slimes or customs. And I guess they're just not available tonight. I don't know. So I offered tomorrow as an option. If that doesn't work, I will offer Saturday afternoon as an option, even though it's called after dark, we'll try afternoon. Um, and if that doesn't work, last case I can try is Monday. Um, no, Roxy, I don't think you're at a roll for slime level, honey. I think, aren't you at the grab bag level? So that that's not that's not the same thing, um, and story as well singing. Oh yes, I will tell you that story. So don't. Um, so one of the we went to this Hollywood Bowl concert the the other day, and it was a great concert. But um, there's a reason that like.
trained singers know how to do certain things with words. And one of the most annoying things on the planet is hearing, did y'all know that you can launch Pokemon Go while watching a live? I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, is hearing people sing over the professional singers at a concert. Now, look, there are some concerts when singing along is warranted. And there are some times and places for those things. But if someone is singing a quiet solo on a stage with an orchestra, you can pretty much assume that you're not supposed to sing along, right? Like I thought that this was obvious, but apparently there's people in the world who don't understand that. Like if there is a big group number where everyone is singing, like for example, they had the DuckTales theme song at this concert and that was amazing. And a lot of audience members sang along because it was cute and funny and it was a big group number. That's a really happy moment. But if you wait until Jody Benson the absolute legend of this planet is on stage with a full 40 piece orchestra singing a solo of part of your world. If you wait until that moment to sing at the top of your lungs and you are an adult without any mental differences, you are a smash mole. You are not a good person. You are a bad person and you are a bad example for your children that are there with you. And this person not only sang over Jodi at the top of her lungs, she also did not sing on key or on time. So every time there was an end to a line, she would finish the S's after Jodi. So you would hear after, and it would ruin the next line. And finally, Secret Husband, gently said to the woman's wife, hey, could you ask her to just tone it down a little so we can hear? And he yelled at Secret Husband. He yelled at him. He stood up and yelled at him at a Disney concert in front of everyone. And I was like, guys, this isn't a sing-along. And he's like, oh yeah, it's not a sing-along. What is it then? And I was like, he did. I was like, you guys, it's, it's not a sing-along. It's not. There are shows that are advertised at the Hollywood Bowl as sing-along. There was one on the screen. It said that there was going to be a sound of music sing-along. It said the word sing-along on the advertisement. This is a concert with an orchestra. Do you know what they don't pay orchestras to do? Come to a sing-along. Do you know what they use for sing-alongs? Tracks. You know why? Because an orchestra is expensive and no one wants to hear you and your off-key wife with an orchestra. I, I mean, it was baffling. And he was like, well, we brought my daughter here tonight. And we were like, okay, well, she probably wants to hear Jody sing then. I don't know. Like, she didn't come to hear her mom sing off key. She can hear that in the car on the way home. Like, I didn't say that, but I should. And so I, want, I didn't do this, but I wanted to make a video after. I was gonna make a sarcastic video that was like, hey guys, I'm here for you today with three fun ways to tell you if you wanna know if you're at a sing-along or not. Number one, is there a screen on the stage with a little bouncing ball over the words or are the words changing colors as they go by? If so, it might be a sing-along. Did the cast on stage say, come on everybody, join us? Then it might be a sing-along. And last but not least, if the words on the poster say sing-along, it might be a sing-along. That's it. Those are the only ways that it's a sing-along, you guys. That's it. If you don't see one of those things, it's not a sing-along. And they don't, we don't want to hear you. We don't want to hear you. Like, like it, it, that's it. That's it. We want to hear the people. I was like, I paid to hear Joe. Like, I literally bought that ticket because I found out, sure, a Taylor Swift concert. Of course, that's a different situation because that's like hundreds of thousands of people screaming at the top. That's a, a rock concert is a different situation. This was a seated concert with an orchestra. A seated concert with an orchestra is not a sing-along. It's not. And... I literally told her, I was like, I bought these tickets only to hear Jody Benson sing. It ended up being great for the whole Corbin situation and everything like that. But the only reason I bought the tickets was because I heard that Jody Benson was going to be singing live. And that is the moment that she started to sing over people. She didn't sing any of the songs before that. She started to sing only over Jody Benson, who is an actual legend. And a lot of people pay a lot of money to hear her sing live. Like, I was like, I didn't pay $120 per ticket to hear you. I heard, I paid it to hear Jody. I don't spend money a lot. You guys know this. I don't splurge ever. 
Like I, I work all day. I don't buy anything other than supplies with my extra money. I bought these tickets so that I could hear Jodi Benson sing because she's my literal hero. And this woman sang over her the entire time. I was like, you're an actual jerk. Like there's a special place in hell for people who do stuff like that. It was like you, to have the seats behind us for three people, that means they spent almost $500 to sing over Jody Benson. Who does that? Who does that? She really did. Last time I was at a show, there was a loud conversation. Actually, there was a couple next to us, two women who were, um, I, I shouldn't have said couple, but um, somebody actually told them to be quiet. But anyway, that's another story. So secret husband's home. We're going to go have breakfast. Not go. We're going to the cafe for breakfast here at home. But um, I will see you all later. I might get on and make base slime or something. I don't know, but we will not have a roll for slime tonight. Like I said, I will use that time to make videos. And right now the sign up is up if someone is available for tomorrow. And if not, we'll keep trying other days uh, to finish off the month. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day and take care of yourselves until then. Bye guys.